Let's talk about Alan Taylor, director of nine episodes of The Sopranos, ranging from season one, season four, season five, season 6A, and season 6B. Let's start with Pax Soprana, season one, episode six. Pax Soprana is the episode where the boys make a little time for Junior in honor of his new position as boss of the DeMeo crime family. These guys today, they want to be buried in a jogging outfit. To our new boss. Salute. I love the ending scene with the back and forth from the dinner to the FBI offices with the music and the sound of the camera snapping. It's also interesting how half of the guys on the board ended up being rats, and I love how they're taken down with thumbtacks. It reminds me of Christopher and Eugene's making ceremony with the finger pricks. All right, give me a hand. The end of the strong silent type reminds me a little bit of the test stream in terms of one of them going to stay at a hotel. It also makes me think of the end of Guy Walks into a Psychiatrist's Office, where Carmela warms up the pasta for Tony in the microwave, and other times where Tony comes home and warms up his food in the microwave and Carmela is sitting down at the table because he came home late and Carmela is upset with him. It's almost like it would be Carmela's test stream, the back and forth between Tony and Furio, the similarities and differences, and of course, Furio being in it because he's Carmela's crush. scene with Polly in the Pio Mai painting. I almost feel like words just wouldn't do it justice. You just have to hear it. In Rat Pack, Tony B shows up with a bang, and we know that he leaves with one too. Say provolone. Uh. Very nice, it's giving me a heart attack. And then of course there's the whole rat pack picture aspect. I love the FBI warning here that pops up at the beginning of the ladies movie night watching Citizen Kane. Fleshy part of the thigh. This scene outside the hospital is museum quality work, I'll admit that. And coming out of the hospital, it's almost like foreshadowing the many things to come. I'm gonna go get the car, I'll follow you home. Dennis. What? You're supposed to be dead. From now on, every day is a gift. Yeah. I'm gonna go get the car. In the ride, more foreshadowing. To me, when we see Christopher laying here pale as a ghost, and then the ride shutting off and going dark later on, just like with Christopher's life, as we see the ride swirling around, all the lights, the Ferris wheel, the different rides spinning people around, we see this red, white, and green color, which makes me think of Italy. As Christopher looks up at this, he sees Italy. That's what this whole thing of ours is supposed to be about tradition, family. We see the family gathering around the Christmas tree. We zoom out at the very end. We see the big picture. We also can think about this from To Save Us All From Satan's Power, season three, episode 10. Mouth Billy Bass, what is that? Wait to see what it does. What, what does it do? You'll see. Some things are the same. Some things are also very different. Stage five. No more Butchie. No more of this. I love this transition from toxin 
asbestos dumping, when you think of everything you touch turns to shit, this is a very literal example here with the asbestos dumping. And then we switch over to Tony at the end of his peyote journey, seeing this, this beautiful scenery, standing up and saying, I get it. He sees the light, but light can often be very dark, as we know with Tony, when we think of what he means when he says, I get it. <laughs> And finally, the blue comet. Everything blends once again, often with disastrous consequences. And when it comes to these worlds that we go in and out of, you really have to keep your head in its A-game in both. <laughs> finally, at the end of the episode, when Tony walks up the stairs and he's sitting in the dark room with the gun that Bobby got him, I mean, wow. Talk about lots of darkness to come. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this latest video on Alan Taylor, one of The Sopranos directors. What'd you think?